very important um, message today that I think is, number one, as Americans, we, you know, we get so, uh, we're so busy, there's a lot going on in the world, and, uh, you know, from the heart comes a lot of good stuff, but, you know, it's almost like it's, we feel it's a sin to just hang out, just rest. You know, so often we sit down and say, oh, I have so many things that I should be doing right now, I could be doing it. To feel guilty for resting, for sitting. You know? I learned a lot in this next message that I'm going to give you. And I know, there's never a doubt in my heart, yeah. my mind, when the Lord revealed it. But I know, and I am as sure as I'm standing here today, know that this is the Lord speaking to us in our day, our time. Because after he revealed this message, and it has to do with rest, I remember going to confession, and it was within a, a couple of days of hearing this message from the Lord, and it was amazing. It was one of the most profound confessions I've ever had because um, in the middle of the priest giving me absolution, the prayer for absolution, he completely stopped the prayer. And he was so taken back. And he said to me, oh my God, this never happened to me before. And I'm looking, and he said, I heard the Lord speak. And he said, rest. You need rest. I will never forget that day. So I'm going to share this message with you. And take it to your heart, because the Lord's speaking to you. Come to me, my sons and daughters. Lay your anxieties at my feet, my throne. Let's retreat away from the noise and demands of the world. It is so difficult to exist on this earth at times. I know this well. Rest. A soul needs quiet in order to be restored, and rest to be refurbished. Rest, sleep, pray. I go with you, I go with you always when you rest and sleep. You bring me there by your prayer. Work for your provisions, yes. But do not become a slave to your work because of unnecessary extras. Gather your family. Be with them. You are the most important part of their well-being. Do not waste time nagging and arguing. Let peace and love reign in your home. It is hard to exist in this world for everyone. Come away from it, the world. Make your home a loving retreat. My peace be with you, Jesus Christ. Lay your anxieties at the foot of my throne. Let's retreat away from the noise and the demands of the world. It is so difficult to exist on this earth at times. I know this well. Rest. A soul needs quiet in order to be restored. Rest, sleep, pray. I go with you always when you rest and when you sleep. You bring me there with your prayer. Work for your provisions, yes, but do not become a slave to your work because of unnecessary extras. Gather your family and be with them. You are the most important part of their well-being. Do not waste time nagging and arguing. Let peace reign and love in your homes. It is hard to exist in this world for everyone. Come away from it. Make your home a loving retreat. My peace be with you, Jesus Christ. I need to 
explain anything there. It's a clear directive. But there's one even better than that. He woke me up with it yesterday morning for this moment. In Matthew 5, it prays. Now when he saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came with him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsify, falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Those were the words of Jesus Christ. And as I'm speaking to you, I can see in the interior of my heart and soul this beautiful place that I stood on and I heard a priest pray Holy Mass giving this beautiful scripture, the Mount of Beatitudes. It is the most beautiful place. It overlooks the Sea of Galilee. It's where I bought this treasure. Bibles, uh, um, New Testament and Psalms. Not only is that scripture so touching and consoling and resting, I watched an entire room one day. I watched the Holy Spirit go through the entire room in a hospital one day to bring healing. I had just had major abdominal surgery, my sixth abdominal surgery, and was very, very weak. One of the nurses asked me if I would be so kind as to talk to some of the people who had come to the hospital, um, that were, some were on staff and some had come back from work hoping that I would just talk to them and share with them some of the experiences and maybe some of the words that Jesus had given me. And I told her I would let her know. I remember hardly having enough breath to hold a, a whole sentence, let alone try to have a conversation. I will never forget that day. I knew in my heart, there was no way I could talk for any length of time. And even if I could, having just gone through so much, I couldn't conjure up, I couldn't muster up, whatever the word is, anything that I felt was important to say. And one by one, people were coming into my hospital room and, and, and just just asking and feeling so guilty to even ask. It, it was so humbling. And so I said, okay, and I'll never forget. They helped me to get to walk to the chapel at the hospital. 
and the chapel was full. Not knowing what to say, I implored the Holy Spirit for words. What, which message, Lord, do you want me to share? What message? Out of all that you have said, what experience? And, and nothing was coming to my heart. Nothing stood out. And so I just prayed a short prayer to the Holy Spirit, and my eye caught hold of a, a large, very large Bible in the back of the chapel. And so walking straight to the Bible, it was already open. And I just thought, <laughs> like that. <clears throat> But it was led by the Spirit. It was amazing. See, simple. Simple. No plan. And it, it landed on that scripture. My finger landed on that scripture. And so I just opened. Well, I was already, it was already open. I just turned and started to read that scripture. Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. I have never seen anything like this before. But that whole room of people were sobbing, just sobbing, crying unbelievably, but with such joy, except for one, except for one. And I just witnessed a light unlike anything I had ever seen before. Just this rejoicing spirit and happy. I didn't say anything of my own. It was just reading this, this beautiful scriptures. And so um, one after another came up, they were saying a few things and what you know that what they felt when, uh, and heard, um, not sure of themselves, but just sharing what they sensed when the scriptures were, were read. And, and many wonderful things came from that. Much fruit was born from that scripture. It was the beginning of a time of learning for me in a whole different level, if you will, of witnessing, trusting, counting on God explicitly, even up until the last second with having absolutely nothing. And that can go straight across the board in whatever circumstance we find ourselves in. Turning with great trust to Jesus Christ, to the blessed Trinity, for their provision. And they always come through. Shortly after that, one of the women that was in that group came to our prayer group meeting. And I'll never forget, we were all praying. It was beautiful. Um, the rosary. And in the midst of that time, I heard this most awful screeching, scrawling scream in the church. And then again. And I remember some of the men that were in the prayer group praying, running for the doors. They wanted to see what was going on. Um, and we thought some kids riding around and open the church doors and, you know, screaming, whatever. And they came in, nobody was out there. And it happened again. And then this person, this woman, stood up. And she went off. She just started ranting and raving and screaming at us, and, and me in particular. And I never in my life encountered
encountered anything like that. It was pretty new in ministry at that, that time. Um, probably five years under my belt. And I remember thinking, saying in my soul, what is going on? And then I caught it. This, just, this, this light, this understanding, this illumination. And from the depths of my being, never having said this before or experienced anything like that before, from the depths of my being came these words. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to sit down, to be quiet, and to be at peace. And everybody turned and looked at her, and she was like melted butter. Everything had gone from her. She had just melted in that seat like butter. And the second that the rosary was finished, she was gone. I will never forget that. But therein, again, is our protection from leading a sacramental life, praying the Holy Rosary, and counting on the Holy Spirit. Counting on God to be there for us. And it was powerful. I learned a lot in that night. It was one of the first lessons in spiritual warfare. And as scary as it was, it strengthened me profoundly by the many other occasions ahead of time that God called me to step up to the plate. And normally, usually, walking into it, not, not being prepared or not knowing, right? But we don't have to worry about it. That's not our problem. It's his problem. We just got to be good. We just got to go to the Lord. We just have to receive him with an open heart. And we have to trust him. We have to trust. We have to bring him into our moment. And we have to trust him. Bring him into your moment and trust him. It changes everything. Because we ascend to heaven with our trust. He descends on us with overflowing mercy. He takes care of it. And just bring us into the world to dump us on this difficult place to live and to leave us. He's here to walk with us. And as the scriptures teach us, to be a lamp at our feet. To be a light on that path as we walk. We may not see the whole journey. We might see what's ahead of us. And that's all we need. And if that's all we have, that's all God thinks we need. And we are moved. May God bless us. May he give us the gift of fortitude, all of us. May he give us peace. And may we rest in the peace of knowing he's watching. We're good. We're good. God bless us and God bless our families. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.